back to my channel. Today we are working on day 10 um, and it is technically day 11 that I'm working on this, but I, I decided to take a day off from the project. Um, I just needed a little breathing room last night, so I'm actually working on this on the 11th. Um, I think I'm going to put up the video right away just so you guys don't have to wait till tomorrow. So I'll put up this video as soon as I'm done editing and recording it. Um, but for my 10 story, yes, last year I had documented the 10 things that I was loving. So I had every intention of using this as a foundation page. I had stamped loving. Um, it was super cute. I had every intention of using this as a foundation page. Like I even put the number 10. I got to figure out how to salvage some of this. Oh, that comes off really easily because I want to save that. But I had every intention of, you know, using this as my page. And then the 10th rolled around and I decided instead of doing 10 things that I was loving, I was going to do something I was calling 10 of 10. Um, if you're familiar with Amy Gretchen's work, she does a thing on the 12th day of the month called 12 of 12, where she takes 12 photos of 12 things that represent what that day looked like. And I decided to do 10 of 10, um, because I woke up that day and I wasn't feeling the loving prompt. And I was just like, well, I still want to document 10 things. Um, I really enjoy playing with numbers in my album as far as I can. So I do five things, 10 things. 12 things is my holiday playlist. By the time we get to like day 14, I'm not going to take 14 pictures, but I do like documenting numbers while I can. So I decided to do 10 of 10. So I have 10 pictures of 10 things. And at first I was setting alarms to take pictures like on the 10 minutes of every hour. And then I realized I was being a little bit wild. So I just took 10 pictures that represented my day. And I actually did record doing the jelly plating. Look at my fingers, they're covered in ink again. But I actually did record doing the jelly plating. So you will see how I did the jelly plating to make these really fun textured um, little doors because these are all gonna be swivel pieces. Um, at first I thought about doing flip ups, but I was like, I like swivelly actions more. And it's a reason, it just gives me an excuse to put a dent in my brad stash. Now, I actually don't know if I have enough star brads for this. So I might have to use like generic circle brads because my star brad stash is running really low. So I'm gonna have to probably use generic circle brads. So the other thing I did was I printed uh, a picture of my the, the first ornament I saw on the tree when I came home. So I was like, perfect, this is gonna be my cover because this is obviously gonna have to do some sort of flipping out mechanism so it all fits on the page. And then I typed up a list and I called it on the 10th day of Christmas and I just typed up a list. So this is not actually like a love letter. This is like list style journaling. And I just made a list of all the things in those pictures, very wordy. <laughs> and then I made a note of how much I have to cut my picture by. So um, I need to get some cardstock. And then we're gonna start putting this thing together and I'm gonna stop talking so we actually do something. All right, friends, so we're gonna switch gears really quickly and I'm just gonna talk you through uh, jelly plate mono printing. So if you've never used a jelly plate before, jelly plates are just uh, silicone or rubber uh, surfaces and you can apply different mediums to them and do what's called mono printing. Now you can mono print with paint, you can mono print with ink, with watercolor. One of my favorite mediums to mono print with are distress oxides because I have such a giant color palette of them. So pretty much what you do is you apply the ink to the plate. Now my plate is stained and mottled because I've been I've had it for a very long time. So you apply the ink to the paint to the plate sorry and we just want to mix colors so I did a, a few with green so I used bundled sage crushed olive and pine needles and then for the reds I did festive berries candied apple and aged mahogany and then you just take a brayer and I'm just using the brayer to kind of mix the inks around now if you didn't do this you would get like those obviously the square shapes from when you like bounced it um directly onto the plate which could be a thing but I just wanted a more blended look and then you pop whatever you're going to pull the print on. I'm using 110 pound cardstock to pull my print. And then I just use a piece of copy paper to um, burnish with the brayer because the more pressure you put down, the better uh, effect of the print you're going to get. And then I just took my paper trimmer and cut two by three rectangles of my red and my greens. Now you'll see that my green is a little bit more mottled than the reds. That's just because... Um, the green palette in the Distress Oxides, there's just more variation in the greens than I personally think there is variations in the reds. Um, and then the other thing I did was I pulled out that December Daily Number Stamp. Now this is a, a new stamp for this year. And I popped in, I popped those little two by three rectangles I popped, I cut into my Mini Misty. Now, um, 
my two by three rectangles are cut the same size as my photo. So that's why they're two by three. Um, and I popped it into my mini Misty. And then from here, I'm just stamping them down. So I'm using dis uh, not distress, sorry, I'm using Versify and Claire pigment ink in Nocturne, which is the black pigment ink it is my favorite pigment ink. And then I'm just stamping them down directly on to those squares. I like using my mini Misty for stuff like this one, because this is a new stamp set. And I want to be able to stamp more than once if I have to. Um, and two, it just helps me get like really even pressure. Now you could, again, hand stamp this, but since I have a Misty, I like using what I have. And then the Versify and Claire uh, pigment ink is my favorite black ink these days. So it's the one I reach for the most. And from here, I just take each of my little um, rectangles, which are, again, are cut two by three because that's the size of my photo. I take each of my little rectangles into my Misty, and then I just stamp my little heart out. And I put all the even numbers on the red ones, um, all the odd numbers on the green ones, just so that when I arrange them in the book it would be every other and um again you could probably cluster them so all of them are the same this is just again these are just choices I chose to make because I thought they would be really fun choices and once I did all the stamping I cleaned up my misty uh cleaned up my workstation and then went back to work with assembling the page but I did do this in advance before I started working because from here I just wanted to do the assembling process but I figured I would stick a little bit of this in so if you've never seen mono printing before you kind of know how to do it um and so you can see how I made this so I'm gonna stop talking now and you're gonna hear again me talking again in a little bit where I pick up with assembling the rest of this page. Okay, so I have some cardstock that I cut at to be 8.25, which is the height of a page protector. And I'm going to score it at 6.75. Now, I'm gonna score it at five. How wide is that picture? I did a bunch of math and then like, I hold on, I'm gonna go back to my notes because I did a bunch of math to make sure that I knew how, um, wide my pieces were and then I immediately forgot 5.5 okay so I'm gonna score this at five and a half like I, when I do pages like this I do a bunch of like work in advance to make sure that the page is going to do what I want it to do um, and so that my measurements and everything fit so this has to be scored at five and a half and that's how it's gonna look in the album I'm gonna make sure this is like folded straight so it's not like totally hideous um, what is going on with me today all right, so I probably should look for my bone boulder. I just have no idea where it is. Oh, I do know, haha. -ha. Um, I have this really bad knack for not putting things back where they're supposed to be, so then I can't ever find anything. So I'm very surprised I knew where my bone boulder was today. Okay, so perfection. So that's what that's gonna, oh, I have ink all over my fingers and it is staining everything. All right, we might have to take a break for me to wash my hands. Um, and then I'll come back and get to work because I'm transferring fingerprints um, and it's going to make me nuts if I get prints all over my stuff. Okay. So I'm back. I've managed to do a few things when I went to wash my hands. So I was no longer transferring ink everywhere. Um, I realize why I'm getting inky fingerprints this time in a way that I normally don't get inky fingerprints. Um, I'm using distress oxides for my jelly plating, which is a pigment dye ink hybrid. Um, I stamped my six really high. Um, which is a pigment dye ink hybrid. So it just takes longer to dry than um, just a dye ink would, which is why it's still on my fingers. Normally dye inks dry like instantly. So even though I get ink all over my fingers, it doesn't transfer, but this pigment dye ink situation is just taking a really long time to dry. All right, so I have my crocodile um, and I'm just punching holes in my numbers and attaching them to my photos. Um, you could do this with a paper piercer. I just, I have better success with the crocodile because you get a really clean uh, hole. Um, and then these are one eighth inch. These are one eighth inch holes. So I know they're not gonna be like super big and um, the brad is gonna like spin around in the way that if I'd punch the holes with like a power punch, which the holes are considerably larger with a power punch. These are one eighth inch or three sixteenths because the crocodile is an eyelet setter, right? So it's designed to have small holes to set eyelets. So I like to use my crocodile uh, when I'm doing brads, but you know, to each their own. All right, so I have my 10 photos and their brads all attached. So I have a few other like really decorative things that we're gonna do. We're gonna do some more stamping, which I probably should have done in advance. I tried to have as much of this particular page done in advance because I knew there were a lot of moving parts um, to get it done. All right, so here is going to be the base of my canvas and three has to go there. 
four has to go there. So when I was planning this in my head, I was like, how do I make sure that these are evenly spaced out? But now that I'm doing it, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have them evenly spaced out. Maybe I should have like some a, a little bit closer to each other than others, have some of them kind of like doing like funky things, you know, like, I don't know. I kind of like random pages. That's, that's my thing. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I like having things that are a little bit random and a little bit disorganized, but like intentionally disorganized, right? Like I think that looks personally, I think that looks better than if they were like in a perfect, you know, perfect row, right? So that is pretty much the inside of my page. So I'm just gonna go in and use my, Never mind. before I do that, I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Before I do that, I'm gonna add trim because one of my favorite things to do in December is add a texture and trim in a way that I don't do. I don't do trim like the rest of the year. I don't know why. Trim feels like something that's just for December. So I have a huge trim stash that I don't use the rest of the year. I only use my trim in December. So I have this scallops trim and this is like actually holiday scallops trim from Target. You guys, if you don't check like the Target bullseye playground or the dollar spot or whatever they're calling it this year um, for December daily supplies, you're really missing out. They have really fun ribbon every year. They always have really fun ribbon. Um, there's sequins in there if you like to make shaker pockets. Like you don't have to break the bank to do this particular project. So this is just trim that I got in the Target dollar spot um, probably two or three years ago. I've had it for a really long time. And since I only use trim in December, it lasts a really long time. So I'm actually just gonna go and add some trim to the bottom of these uh, numbers. Now this is like felt ribbon. Um, so it's giving me that felt vibe that I really wanted for this album. Um, and it's just, it's just ribbon. Look at that, look at how fun that looks. Just adding a little bit of trim. So I'm just gonna go in, quickly add some trim to the bottom of these numbers. And then after I add the trim, I'm going to stick them down because you've already seen how I'm building this page. So you guys don't need to come back and watch me like play with adhesive for the next 20 minutes because it's probably gonna take me some time to stick each of these down. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna trim these up, stick them down, and then I will come back when I am ready to uh, go on to assembling the front of this page. Because pretty much the inside of this, once I do all of this, the inside of this is all done. Like, I thought about originally doing this on patterned paper so that the so that the inside of this isn't so stark. Like, I was like, should I do this on patterned paper? Should I do this on white? I decided to go with white. Um, I know I said I was gonna like stick this down and disappear, but I'll just talk you through some of my design process while I'm doing this. I was originally going to use like a black and white patterned paper um, because black and white for me at least reads like a neutral, right? So I was originally going to use a black and white patterned paper um, just so there wouldn't be all this like empty space. But there's something about white space, right? Like there's something to be said for white space as a design. There's something to be said for breathing room. and. You guys, I'm preaching to the choir with this one because I love chaos. Um, but with the red and the green and the black stamping and everything else, I just thought that it would make more sense to leave it not, like to have, to leave the white space, I guess, to leave a little bit of breathing room from all of this other chaos going on. Um, and now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, should I have kept the, should I keep the white space? Should I add the paper? But at this point, I think we're gonna have to go with less is more just for here and guys don't hold me to this like we are still in full embellishment pure chaos territory but at least for this particular page i'm gonna go with less there's nothing less about this anyway but i'm gonna go with enough i actually would just say that it's enough so we're gonna say that the trim and the colored jelly plate number placards thing um is enough and i, I really like i will say one more thing about this i really like how modeled and textured the green um ones came out i don't have i have the full distress ink library but the reds are very similar in a way that the greens were not so i used three greens and i got some really interesting uh, tones and light tones and dark tones i probably should have used um some pinks maybe with the reds or even an orange. I think if I had thrown in an orange, I would have gotten a lot more variation 
than what I actually did get, but I was worried that the orange would just read too orange and that's why I went with the green. And I probably should stop talking about this because I do have to voice over that part after I'm done here. So you'll you'll hear all about my color selection process at this point because this, this uh, jelly plating bit is going first. But anyways, I'm going for real. I'm gonna finish trimming up my numbers, um, stick them down to this page, and then I'll come back and we'll work on the front side of this. Okay, so I have uh, uh, attached all my little pages and I realized I didn't leave myself any room to actually stick it into the album. So I'll have to put some sort of like transfer. I've, I've been using acetate um, to do that and that works. So that's what that's gonna look like shut. Um, and you'll get a little peek at what is here when the album's closed and then it'll obviously have to go in somehow. Now, the rest of the page is going to go like this. So I actually think it might have been easier for me to work on this side before I worked on the other side, but that's okay. So I think I said that this was five and a half. So I'm gonna trim this down because I did not trim this down to five and a half. So this is five and a half and that's gonna be the front side. And then um, this is 3.75. So I'm going to trim my photo at three and three quarters inches. Now I am cutting my photo. This It's okay to cut your pictures up, you guys. Like the world doesn't end if you cut your pictures, it is okay. Um, the scrapbooking gods will not punish you. You can cut your pictures. Okay. So that is going to, so now I did something like this for my product play lesson, but I did, I did it with transparencies. Um, I'm not going to do it with a transparent bit here. Um, cause I want the whole picture cause I'm going to put another, a number 10 on my picture. So now the way this works is I'm going to stick this photo or well, this piece of the photo directly to the paper that my journaling is on. Um, and I'm just gonna go edge to edge. Now this is going to cover that front edge, right? So I actually do need a little bit of pattern paper. Um, so I'm gonna have to find some pattern paper, but that's what that's gonna look like. And then that is going to sit like this. And then this is going to flip. So it's gonna be like a double flip because I'm outrageous. That's honestly the only reason I have for why this page is so ridiculous. It's going to flip like this, which is the list of the 10 things my true love gave to me on the 10th day of Christmas. And then it will flip open where you can see little pictures of the 10 things that my true love gave to me on the 10th day of Christmas. Again, you don't need to be this ridiculous, you guys. It is totally okay to take it easy with this project or you could be ridiculous like me. So this is actually a scrap of the diagonal striped paper that I was going to use um, for for the inside of this page. I have another piece of it. So this is a scrap of it, of the one that I had cut into. And this is what I was going to, again, put on the inside of my page, but I opted to not do that. But I do have to cover, here's why I have to cover the inside of this, because my flip moment, my flip elements do not use washi. So we're gonna have to add some sort of paper Right, so since I have to add some sort of paper anyway, we might as, well, might as well make it something pretty. So I'm just going to stick, I almost did it the wrong way. I'm gonna stick this down. It'd be easier to just do it this way so I could see the edge. I'm gonna stick this down. And again, we are just, we're being a little outrageous this December. And honestly, I, I need it. So we're just gonna be outrageous. I have my scoreboard. I had my scoreboard. I lost it. It's literally on the floor somewhere. Oh, never mind. I found it. Okay. So now we're going to score this right at the edge of this picture. Where is the edge of this picture? I want to score it. I want to score it right here. Perfection. So we're going to score it right at the, that is not, is that where I want to score it? Yeah, that feels good. All right. We're going to score it right at the edge of this picture. Okay, perfect. Oh, I was like, why does this look wrong? This looks wrong. Okay, so we're gonna score this right at the edge of the picture. You guys are just gonna hear me tossing tools around and hear me muttering to myself as I figure things out. Again, that is the upside to me doing these quote unquote like lifestyle is that you guys see all the, the twists and turns these projects take for me to get to where I wanna go. Also, you see the obnoxious amount of adhesive I use. This is why I buy so much adhesive in preparation for this project, because I just use so much of it. You can, in fact, use score tape. I just refuse, because um, I don't like score tape. I don't like having to mess with release paper. Okay, so did I do that right? I did do that correctly. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. There we go. Pretty much the skeleton of this project it only took me like forever. All right, so this is going to go here. 
we are doing double flips. This flips here. I will put some sort of embellishment here. There's like the clear things in the kit. I could put some sort of clear piece here. Um, here is my journaling. When this closes, this opens up. And then here are my photos. And I might put a piece of trim right here. Um, maybe. I think I might put a piece of trim right here just because this is really naked. Or I could just make this picture a little bit smaller. Yeah, actually that might be what I do. I might just make this smaller and make the picture a little bit smaller because I haven't attached it yet. So we're gonna take off half an inch here. That works. And then we're gonna take off half an inch of, off of this. Because again, the journaling is on the other side. So this can be cut like this. It doesn't matter if I trim this down because the journaling is on the other side. And I like it so much more without all that free white space because um, that free white space just felt like, like it just felt like an accident. It didn't feel like intentional white space. Okay, and let's just make sure this still fits. And this just still, okay, this does still fit. Now, I'm hoping, my tape runner feels like it's running out on me. So I'm hoping that it will hang out with me long enough to attach this, but we will see. If it does, if it runs out on me, on the bright side, I have a lot more because we stocked up for December. Okay, so let's make sure this isn't upside down. I have done this, you guys, by the way. I've completed like entire crazy flip pieces and then stuck everything down upside down and they did not work. So pay attention to the orientation of the stuff you're putting down because it does matter and you don't want to like work on a whole piece and then have it all be upside down. You got to tear it apart. All right, that, oh, that looks so good. That's going to be super cute. All right, so there we go. I'm going to find my tab stickers and put a tab sticker here. Um, how cute would it be to put two tab stickers? We're gonna do two tab stickers. So we're gonna put a tab sticker here cause that pulls out like that and that, and then it lays flat. And then we're gonna put another tab sticker cause that pulls out like that. And again, we're just being ridiculous this December. Now I do need to have something on it to put in the album. And I actually think I might just attach it to that because it's the same pattern paper that's on the other side. So I'm just going to cross my fingers that my tape is still on my side. Almost, almost. Okay, I think we got enough of it. Now my picture for day 11, I just have to make sure that my picture for day 11 is a 6.75 by, you know, whatever the size of the page protector is. Um, that might actually, where's my ruler? Now, that looks good. We have good clearance, top and bottom. And what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I'm gonna make sure my picture for day 11 is a full, like a full picture by itself. That way, um, that way this is reinforced, right? So I'll punch holes into the picture, put it on top of this, and then this whole thing is reinforced. It'll be adhered, it'll be sandwiched. Um, so I'm gonna go look for a stamp set um, because if you remember day 10, this is day 10. I have no idea what day it is anymore. Time is relative. If you remember day nine, my album is outrageous, you guys. Day nine is the backside of this envelope. So I have to cover the backside of this envelope. So what I was thinking about doing is stamping a 10 of 10 um, on a piece of white cardstock and then just sticking it directly on the backside of this envelope. Um, and that would be that. That looks like it's breaking. I think that acetate ripped. And then that will be that. This, this, and again, I have foundation pages for things and then I get to the day and I just tear them up. This is why I'm not attached to foundation pages, you guys. Um, so if you're like, wow, Tasha, you put on all that work, you did all that embossing and then you tore it up. That's okay. That's part of the process. So I'm gonna go look for my stamps. I'm gonna go get a number. We're gonna be back in a few issues. Okay, so the last thing I was doing was I said I was gonna get some stamps, right? So I, I looked, it took me a very long time to find this. I'm almost ashamed of how long it took me to find this particular stamp set, but this is the Juniper and this is the Jumbo one. So Carrie Bradford, my dear, dear friend Carrie, who has like a straight beeline to my stampy heart, um, over the summer released the Juniper series and she released the four inch stamp that I didn't know I needed. And it's the Juniper stamp. That's not straight, straighten out a little bit. Um, it's the four inch stamp that I didn't know I needed. And so I have the Juniper Jumper numbers 
and the Juniper Jumper Alphabet. And since I had originally stamped an embossed loving, I thought I would just keep to the Juniper Jumbo and stamp my title for this ride. So I just went ahead and put things in my Misty, which makes stamping so much easier than it would normally be because I can't imagine stamping. Well, I can actually, it's not like the end of the world having to do these things individually, but I'm lazy. Um, and so I just popped the whole phrase into my Misty. The good thing about this particular title is it's like I have one of each letter. Um, I don't have any repeats, so I can stamp the entire phrase at once. Um, so I popped the whole thing in my Misty. Um, and then I inked it up. I'm using Versafine Claire Nocturne, which is my favorite black ink. And I'm just gonna, this, this impression is pretty good, but I'm gonna stamp it one more time because I just want it to be really, really dark. Now I could technically go in with clear embossing powder and emboss this so, so it would be shiny, but I didn't treat this with my anti-static powder tool and I don't want clear embossing powder all over this. So I'm just going to opt not to emboss it and just go with the black stamping. But there we go. That is pretty crisp. There we go. How? That's just perfect. All right. The floor in my little craft corner right now is just wild because I'm literally just taking things and throwing them on the floor. After I finish filming, I will clean up, but I'm not the type and if you watch my, my best girl, Crystal Ijunyate, her and I have very different crafting styles. She cleans up as she goes. And me, I just make a graveyard of supplies and clean up when I'm done. Um, I just, I don't wanna deal with cleaning up when I'm creating, I wanna keep making stuff. So I will deal with the mess that I'm making after I'm done. Now, since I have the trim on my things, this video is gonna be super long, you guys. I am so sorry. Um, it's just, I, I'm like still working and I'm just watching the time go and I'm like, this video is just going to be really long. All right. Well, I hope you guys are in it for a long video. Um, and you find some, hopefully find some value here, but I'm just going to take those same trims, the green and the red that I use and make a little border on this because since I have the trim on the other side, I just figured it'd be a cute, like a cute design to layer it over here. One, it repeats that element, so it ties this 10 of 10 to the other side, because otherwise there's nothing else tying this 10 of 10 to the other side, right? It's just like something I did. So by repeating, hello, do I need my weaving scissors? Are you just not gonna cut this? Okay, so by repeating that design element over here, it just helps to tie it together. Now, I don't know if this adhesive is just gonna, is it gonna be bad? Are you gonna be bad adhesive? Okay, it's not being bad, I take it back. It's being, no, it's being bad. Normally when I put trim down, I use score tape, but I just don't, I, one, I don't know where my score tape is, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I just don't know where anything is. This weekend, today's Friday. I don't know what day you guys are gonna be watching this, but today's Friday. And this weekend, I'm gonna to have to do like some deep cleaning of my little scrapbook corner because I literally don't know where anything is. Um, and it's only day 10. So that means that doesn't bode well for my longevity in completing this project if I can't, like literally I had to spend probably a good 10 minutes looking for my crocodile because I needed it to put those star, those circle brads in. And at one point I was like, do I really need these circle brads? And I was like, yes, I want the circle brads. I have to find my crocodile. And I was almost more willing to not do the circle brads than I was to look for my crocodile, which I think is a little, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit ridiculous. I can laugh at myself. I've also switched to my weaving scissors for cutting this felt ribbon um, because my regular scissors were not cutting it. Ha ha, that was kind of punny. But yes, my regular scissors literally were not cutting it. So I just switched to my weaving scissors, which are fabric scissors, but felt is uh, fabric, it's wool. So I would never cut paper with my weaving scissors, but felt is fair game. All right, so I put my little 10 of 10 border down. It's not sticking. I think I was, just, I thought I was being smart by putting the two rows of glue at the same time but I think it just dried too fast and it wasn't sticking. So note to self, don't be smart because when you're smart, it never really pays off for you, Tashi. You think you're smart, but in all actuality, you're just doing the same work twice because I had to put the same, the same level of glue down twice because I thought I was being clever. All right, 
let's get this extra stuff on or well, off actually and then I hope I didn't lose that little red heart because I want to put it on this page aha I have this little red heart I'm gonna pop it right in the middle oh my my ink smeared I probably should have let this dry but I didn't so you guys pigment inks do take some time to dry okay they're not like dye inks they do not dry instantly um, they do take some time to dry so you just want to be careful all right so I added that little heart how oh that's such a cute page it's so fun and then because this page wasn't outrageous enough I'm gonna use this red 10 from Colorcast Designs. So we've tied, there's, there's, I just like numbers. Now it is kind of covering my little nativity ornament. That is not ideal. I'm gonna go with it anyway. When I printed this picture, I, I knew I wanted to use the number. But when I printed the picture, I probably should have printed the, like I probably should have scaled it because I edited this photo in Photoshop. I probably should have scaled it so the ornament was a little higher. I put it dead center. Um, and now I'm realizing that that was not the most ideal choice. But I've also assembled this entire page. So that picture is staying put. Um, and I just, next time that's just something I'll pay a little bit more attention to. So I'm gonna put that 10 right there. There we go. That's day 10. So I have my title, 10 of 10. I have my two flips, my two flip element, uh, elements. That's not even a word. My two flip elements. Um, after I'm done filming, I'm gonna go look for my tab stickers. I just don't, I don't know where they are. Normally I sit at my desk and I tell Joshua to like fetch things for me. Um, I don't know where my tab stickers are enough to go, can you get those for me? So I'll add the tab stickers. You guys, the craft avalanche in this corner is kind of wild. Um, I'll add the tab stickers and I'll add some sort of like embellishment right here. But that, that is day 10 in the book. And it's just, oh, it's so good. All right, so I will quickly read you the things that are on my list. So I wrote, on the 10th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me, number one, the most gorgeous sunrise on my way to work. Most days I go to work before the sun is up, so it was a treat to catch it on its way across the sky this morning. Number two, her and her coffees. I love having these moments with her before the workday starts, even if it's just commiserating over how awful the coming day is going to be and downing caffeine to get us through. Number three, a really sweet sentiment from someone I greatly admire whose friendship means the world to me. Some days I wonder how I got to be so lucky and then I remember it's hard work and dedication and a little pinch of magic and it's enough to keep me focused on the next task. Number four, a work lunch because the grind stops for no one and there's so much to do all the time and so little time to actually get it all done. Number five, a moment to pause in a longer case and just catch my breath after a nonstop morning and afternoon. Grateful for lengthier surgeries where all of the work is done at the beginning and the end and the in-between is an opportunity to rest and collect my thoughts. Number six, the do it for the pod... That's supposed to say the do it for the process podcast. I lost half the title. The do it for the podcast process podcast, which every single time I wonder if my art is worth it or if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be do doing manages to fill me right up. Number seven, the most gorgeous sunset on my way home. It is rare these days that I leave work before the sun has completely set and it's dark, but I managed to catch the last few minutes of daylight and it was the most precious gift. Number eight, my favorite rose gold Christmas friends found a new home today and they fit right in here, even more than they did on their previous home. Number nine, a tiny incense triangle and a tiny homemade ashtray that makes home smell more like home and lets me hold a tiny flame in my hand. That's what it say in my hand and it says in my head, wow. Again, Tatiana should not journal at midnight. <laughs> a tiny flame in my hand and bring the warmth a little bit closer. And number 10, a pile of squish in color that manages to make everything feel better. Who can resist the power of a rainbow? Okay, so those are my things. And then when you open this up, again, these little things, they swivel. So you can see photos of the things that my true love gave to me on day 10. So that's, that's day 10, you guys. This video was very long. I am so sorry. Um, but... There were a lot of things to do here, a lot of twists and turns, a lot of times that this project changed on me and did something else, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you comments. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I say this every day and I get it wrong every single day. And I will see you for day 11, you guys. We are moving right along. So until next time, keep your crafting. Have the very best day and I'll see you around. Bye for now.